Greetings world and welcome to episode 20 of Chronicles of a Nonprofit. My name is Dorina Shine and I am so grateful that you're here. I am a doctor of leadership in uh, philosophy and I want to share with you some important things that is going on in your local Youngstown area. We are the Youngstown Community Center, and we're located at 1413 Belmont Avenue in Youngstown, Ohio, where we help and support youth, young adult, and non- and seniors in the area of events, planning, uh, adult day service, um, business development, And it's just a 21st century way of promoting what we do, putting it all together and giving people that opportunity to shine, that opportunity to take a passion or a thought or an idea that you've always been wanting to uh, step out on, but you didn't want to do it by yourself. That's what we're here to do. And we're here to help also empower the low income to moderate income individuals who are residing in the community from housing to resources to support. And so this is the overall wraparound service of what Youngstown Community Center does. We help veterans, we help uh, young adults, we help second chance individuals coming home, no matter where you are. If you're in a different state, you if you can get here, we're the pipeline to get you here, to get you motivated, to get you, you know, to start a whole new world, a whole new life. But you have to be in that mode of wanting to change. So a nonprofit can give you many different avenues of how to be successful in your own life it is up to you to take that chance. So thank you so much for being a part of the podcast. I thank all the new listeners that um, listen frequently because I see the number. I see the number and I'm very grateful for that. So this podcast must be helping. I would love your comments. I would love you to ask questions about your nonprofit idea in the comment section below or on Facebook because I post these on our Youngstown Community Center page so you can ask the questions in inbox. If you want to test the waters and put yourself out there to become that, you know, individual who took a chance on themselves, feel free to do it. I thank all of the supporters and individuals who participated in the um, Mother's Day support. I mean, every one of you, I I thank uh, the Beverly's. You guys are awesome. A strong support for the Youngstown Community Center, be it the housing program, be it helping to initiate the startup for community support and believing in yourself and starting out on your own little venture that can become something of a great journey. You know, the beginning is very isolated because you need to perfect the craft. And then after that, it begins to empower you every moment and every waking day that uh, you wake, you're going to find a way to make your dream and your passion come true. So one thing I want to talk about today in the topic of the nonprofit that I think everyone, if you're listening and you're interested in, you know, what we do at the Youngstown Community Center, if you want to be a part of it, is how to have a voice. Many times people sit back as observers. They sit back and they would say something about doing it a certain way, doing a project a certain way, or they will sit back and they will criticize something that is being done. Well, see, in in an idea, 
the very thing you have is your voice. And that voice can make great changes across the whole board. You know, the difference between me being a resident of Youngstown, Ohio, I've always been very mature for the community. I've always been, even at my high school age, even at my junior high age, I've always been exceptionally mature. And just because the term Youngstown is there does not mean that we were to remain young, ignorant, immature, uh, controlling, <laughs> being a follower, because the majority of people in this community are far younger than other cities and states. And there's a reason for that. So what I want to do now is empower you to step out and take a leap of faith and move towards something that you see is a need in your community. Now, I'm not talking about a duplication of service. And this can be done anywhere, whether it's Youngstown, whether it's Cleveland, whether it's North Minister, no matter where you are in the entire world, you can find a, pl a place where you fit in to do something victorious that's not being done. And it's something at the grassroots level, okay? A lot of people don't want to share these ideas because they feel like, oh, well, no one's going to listen. You know, I don't care about that. I listen to myself. So as I'm listening to these podcasts, I'm listening to me. And I'm getting the message. I'm perfecting the craft. I'm continually growing. You know, someone asked me the question, where do you get all these unique ideas? Because in June, not only are we going to have a birthday in the month of June for our Geminis and our, 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 our Geminis, I'm going to leave it there. We're going to also have Donuts with Dads, okay? And that's for Father's Day. And then we're going to, you know, raffle off some tools and we're going to go to Home Depot and get some fun stuff. And then we're just going to do a, a movie on what dads represent in our community. And I think that's very vital and important because we don't always appreciate the fathers as much as we do the mothers. Because we know May 13th, this Saturday coming up, is our Mother's Day luncheon. So we're asking the mothers who have been a part of YCC, if you've ever come in and found out about what we do, if you've ever been a part of any event, if you've ever came in for, uh, you know, a, an event, a seminar, I want you to come on down and I want you to um, celebrate Mother's Day with us. It's going to be from 11 to 4 so we're going to do clipettes of what a mother means to you. So think about that too for those who are coming down to the to the luncheon. And and back to the craft, crafting your idea, motivating. So someone asked me the question, how do you come up with these ideas? I said, I don't. People do. I have a portal that brings people together. And when they come together, they're not conditioned and isolated. So what we do is we sit and we talk and and we before you know it, they're like, I would love to try this, or I would love to engineer that, or I would love to craft this. And yes, let's do it. Sometimes they give up because the journey is difficult. Sometimes they don't want to continue on. They want to go another route and try it a different way. That's all great. Because guess what? People are going to always have ideas. And wherever we go, whatever we do, we should be empowered that we're going to always have someone there to help us. You know, so if you start out at, at YCC 
and then move on, that's great. We really don't want that. We want you to stay at YCC and make that your home and empower the community there so we don't have puzzle pieces all over the community. But we want to bring it all together under one roof to be able to empower resources and give the people what they need um, as much as that building can capacitate. Um, <clears throat> capacitate. What does that word mean? Um, I haven't used that word. Let me make sure it's what I want to say. Make something capable of a particular action or legally competent to act in a particular way. Yes, we want to make it capable. We want to make the action competent. So when people come through, we say, yes, we want to be the forerunner in making sure when you come to the Youngstown Community Center, you receive the support and the um, programs that you need. Now, we do need individuals with creative thoughts, you know, such as, you know, people who want to start, you know, online services, you know, support services, virtual services. I have two gentlemen that we're going to be working with uh, phenomenally that is going to help um, exonerate and free their name because we are second chance. Uh, we're also going to be speaking and um, working hand in hand with a, another individual who is doing an online support program for women. Um, this is needed. You know, uh, this is, you know, we're living in a new world. And so, yeah, all the new ideas, they have to be updated. They can't be outdated. Um, because laws change, policies are, you know, presented more effectively. And in that, I want to be able to say that YCC will be the 21st century leadership empowerment business development program for community residents in the low to moderate African American um, the African American community. And, and, you know, it's not just for African Americans, no, but we need a place such as the Jewish Community Center needs a place. We need a place, we need a voice, we need a support mechanism, you know, and that's what we are geared around. And so, when we started the Youngstown Community Center, our mission was we are a multifaceted program empowering the youth, young adult, and senior sector in low to moderate income with uh, activities. And, and what that did years later, after a pandemic, post-pandemic, it is now creating itself in a whole different way but it's still under the same mission. So that's what I want you to think about when you are creating your mission statement, when you are empowering yourself to do something different based on the things you're already doing, because we had always been empowering people. You know, I remember being incarcerated in Marysville Correctional Institution back in 2016 to 2018. And let me tell you, when I went into the institution, it was no different than being in society when it came down to the mental practices that I did on a daily basis. Get up, take a shower in the morning, take a shower at night. I um, would head and spearhead the Emotional Healing Solutions Program that I did a dissertation with in my master's degree program at Youngstown State University, and I would empower the women to stay in recovery, to stay practiced with their emotion because before any drug, alcohol, drink, or any other addictive thing starts in your life, 
it begins with the emotion that is not tapped into. So when we realize that we can work on our emotions, and that's what I did. When I was incarcerated, I, was, I had Monday evening groups for women, the Emotional Healing Solutions Program, where we offered them ideas and used the very thing that addicted us, that brought us into the institution as a stepping stone to talk about how the emotion affected the onset of the addiction. That was a very powerful tool there that kept me on the straight and narrow and focus. And it, it, it created my time to where when it was time to go, I'm like, just like when I graduated and I walked across the stage, I'm like, oh God, four years, I got a bachelor's degree. What do I do tomorrow? I don't have class because I am a consistent person. And in consistency, you want to do the same thing over and over and over again and make it a habit. And you could do that either way. You can be positively impacting or negatively impacting. So the point is that when we realize that, you know, we have these things involved in our lives, our consistency is involved in life, we make better choices. Another example that is coming to mind is when I wanted to tutor at the institution of Marysville Correction. Um, and we got the Ashland University in the house, private institution, been in existence since 1878. They came in and they helped build the first associate degree program in business development for lifers in the institution and those who were um, interested in going to college, getting an associate's degree while serving time. And I was the first tutor set in that university. And I give so much thanks and honor to the warden uh, of Marysville Correctional, all the sergeants, all the corporals, all of the, um, you know, uh, corrections officers by allowing me the opportunity to still be me under serving a punishment. And I'll talk about that another day. But a nonprofit is all about making sure that we recognize what we want to do and we have to see the end goal before we see the onset. You have to see the dream fulfill itself. You have to see the mission, not, not the vehicle, not the car, not the money, not the bank account, but you have to see the passion. You have to see it and it's in state. <clears throat> when you see the end of the idea and why you chose to do it in the first place, That's when everything will come to fruition for you. So yes, it is a journey. It is a wonderful journey. It is a small step. It's like taking that first initial step. When you take the first step, in order to get around where you're trying to go, even if it's another 360 degree circumference, in order to get back around to where you started, you have to keep going. And that's what I want you to know in this Chronicles um, of a Nonprofit. It's not always easy. It's not something that is going to be, you know, uh, comfortable. It's not always going to feel good. There are going to be times where you're going to be tested. There are going to be times you're going to have to research. There are going to be times that you're going to have to motivate yourself when nobody shows up. You're still going to have to keep that door open. So the right people will eventually one day recognize and show up. You have to see the end goal. See, I saw the end goal already when I walked into that, that door and my beautiful Ashley and Isaiah were there, okay? And God blessed them in their path in which they are now going. 
However, I mean, when they showed me the tour and I recognized the things that could be there, I saw it all. It's like it was like a, you know, a warp zone that I was in (laughs) and I just saw everything happening. I saw the people there. I saw it. So my friend always told me as a mentor that you build it, they will come. So shout out to my friend, Mr. J. You build it, they will come. So in building it, that's what I did. And I saw the activities I saw. So everything that we think, everything that we manifest, everything that we feel emotionally will come to pass. Whether it's, you know, for someone else or for us, that's why we stay positive. That's why the news has so many headlines with whatever you see happening. See, I don't see the things that you see happening because I don't even watch the news. The news does not dictate or corrupt the mindset of where I'm headed, you know? So if it's not positive, if it's not something that interests me, I just hide the the, the topics. And that's one thing about the smartphone. You can do that. If you don't want to see, you know, things that other people want you to be afraid of or fear, then just silence it on your smart app. I mean, it's that simple. But back to the nonprofit, the chronicles of a nonprofit. Yes, when you are believing in yourself, that is the very first step to taking the initial practice to being the nonprofit that you're going to eventually want to see at the end of your career. Because again, the mission problem should never take a lifetime to complete. You should have an end goal and you should have a time where you say, I've been, I've been a success. You know, you should have a time where you say, I've been a success at this. And I've embraced that time. So now it's time to move to another dimension. It's time to move to another thought, another activity, another, you know, frequency. And once we do that, we're never stagnant. We're always moving forward. We're always empowering someone else through the empowerment of ourselves. We are not to empower anyone more than we empower us. You know, a lot of people look at relationships and they feel that, oh, well, as long as I give this person what they need, then I should be loved the most. No, we must give ourselves what we need in order to be loved the most. Thank you, Captain Johnson. I love you. I appreciate you. These things are very important in the lives that we empower and that we touch. And that's what the Chronicles of a Nonprofit is all about, touching the hearts of those who need to have something to live for. Because so many times we have been devastating the isolated through pandemics, through COVID, through all this stuff, through sex of, you know, tears of of poverty middle class, low middle class, upper class, we've been conditioned to be either a part of one thing or another. We're not a part of any one thing. We're a part of everything. We just support those low to moderate income individuals who need that lift up, that hand up, not the hand out, the hand up. Thank you, Miss Willie. I love you. I appreciate you. You know, these are people in my lives that have taught me the morals and the values, the techniques. Happy Mother's Day, Mary. You are, you are the one. (laughs) Happy Mother's Day, Dorothy, Margaret. These are the women that profoundly, Fanny, these are the women that profoundly affected my life and demanded independence for me that demanded success for me. Janice, happy Mother's Day. You know, these are women 
who are very valuable to me. You know? And so with that, I thank you so much for being here. Thank you for being consistent and watching these episodes and putting your comments in the thoughts of what we're talking about so that you can create for yourself what you're willing to create. Or you can become a part of what has already been created and make it even better. We need businesses, small businesses who are interested in trying to perfect their craft, if they're willing to learn, if they're willing to take the advice and become the best ultimate business in the city of Youngstown, Ohio, that crafts specifically what they're doing, they need to come to YCC and the Scales to Success LLC project. You need to be here because this is the hottest place. I mean, we're international. We have over 50 nonprofits that support everything we do online. And these people are available to us. And we've been doing this thing since 2006. You know? We have the Institution of Criminal Justice. We have the Innocence Project. We have the Second Chance. We have the International Feeding and Business Development Courses in Ghana and Nigeria. There are so many different things that is taking place in this world of the Youngstown Community Center that you should be taking advantage of because it's in your residential area. So feel free to stop by and visit 1413 Belmont Avenue, Youngstown, Ohio, 44504. Um, <clears throat> yes, you will hear music in the halls. You will, you will smell food in the halls. You will meet new people. You will go into the cafe. You can drink tea and coffee. Yes. These are the things you could do at your local community center. You can create a project. You can create an idea. You, can, you are not restricted. Non-restriction. All open. You know, as long as you're doing the most positive, productive thing that a community deserves to have in their community. Stay consistent. I love you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here with me today. It is very empowering. One day, eventually, I'm going to start going live. So please, uh, if you haven't, get you a YouTube channel um, and uh, be ready to start the process of um, subscribing and joining the membership. We do have a $25 per month membership that you can support your local community center. So come on in, stop by, and we'll give you the basic uh, membership package for $25 that will empower you to use all of the opportunities that is afforded at the Youngstown Community Center. You know, um, it's you can have four visits per month at the $25 rate with one event for free, or you can just donate and come when you want. <laughs> so yes. Yeah, so again, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for liking, commenting, and subscribing to this podcast, Chronicles of a Nonprofit. We appreciate you all. Stay consistent. We love you. And I'm out.